Hey guys, Coach Highway here from Game Leap, and today I'll be covering one common mistake on every hero in Overwatch 2. Before I get into it, if you want more direct advice on your hero and a step-by-step -step detailed way to improve, you should come check out our website today. We have tons of top-level educational guides from pro coaches designed to help you climb and soar up the ladder. Seriously, there are hundreds of guides here, so you're bound to walk away with a newfound wealth of knowledge. Follow this link here and get climbing ASAP. Let's get back to the video. We are going to run this alphabetically today, so the first hero we have is going to be Ana. The biggest mistake people make is not knowing when to scope in versus hip fire. You should use your scope shots when there is nobody looking at you and you have a lot of range between you and your target, since your shots become hit scan, but also they slow you down a bunch. In close range, you should always be strafing and hip firing to give yourself more movement speed and become harder to hit. For Ash, a big mistake is using dynamite to spam when you already have your ultimate. When Bob is ready, dynamite should be used as a dueling tool or be ready to combo with with Bob when he uppercuts someone. Using it to spam when you already have ultimate means you aren't generating any ult charge yourself and you're actually just giving the enemy supports their ultimate from healing. Next is Baptiste and common Baptiste mistake in lower ranks is throwing the lamp in the middle of the team or at the person who needs it. Always put your lamp on a corner or a prop that protects it. Remember that lamp is a radius so you can place it behind a wall and make it impossible for enemies to shoot, thus increasing the time it stays up while still letting the edge of it hit your teammates and protect them. Bastion's biggest mistake is not using his right click grenade as a mobility tool. Lots of new bastions use the grenade as a very straightforward fragging tool but forget that you can use its knockback to get up to high grounds or to avoid danger by standing on top of it so it knocks you away. As for Brig, lots of Brigs make the mistake of always holding their shield. It's important to trade off between taking damage and taking shield damage instead of putting it all on your shield and then all on your health. It can be dangerous sometimes but when you take a little bit of HP damage you can heal it when your shield goes back up which increases your effective health. This can help you survive much longer than taking all of your shield damage and then all of your HP damage as you don't really have time to heal your health. As for cast, the biggest mistake I see players make is always going for insane flanks for their high noon. It's honestly better to just work with your team and get shields or speed boosts or whatever else that you can play around. It will generally help you get more value. I see D.Va players go really deep with their boosters and then end up stuck in the enemy backline with no escape route. It's better to try to engage without your boosters by walking the enemy down. That way you can use your boosters to escape. If you do boost in the enemy backline, you should be looking to turn around and get out before they reach around halfway empty. Of course, if you have your full team supporting and diving with you, then you can ignore this. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to like and subscribe for more excellent educational content for free. Okay, back to our next hero. And that next hero would be Doomfist, and for Doom, you want to never land without having your cooldowns ready when you use your ultimate. When you are landing after your ult, you should be prepared to fight right away, especially since your cooldowns have an increased recharge rate while you are in the air. Be sure to check and try to delay your landing if possible. Echoes forget to set themselves up with sticky bombs before they ult a lot of the time. This simple trick will get you more kills with Echo's ultimate, as you can essentially be doing damage while you're in the transformation phase of your ult. Right before you use your dupe, always throw your sticky bombs at a target you may be going after. This will make them nice and weak for you to follow up depending on which hero you dupe. Genji's mistake is using your deflect before you use Dragon Blade. Deflect is an important cooldown for you closing distance on targets that are, well, distant. It provides Genji with some much needed self-sustain during his ultimate and can make his blade much cleaner in the event that you forget to account for someone's damage or you need to get closer to them. I see a lot of Hanzos use their ultimate without having a clear sight of their targets. Using Hanzo's sonic arrow can give you a sight on your opponents and help you set up dragons in a much more consistent fashion. Remember to always use every tool at your disposal. By far the biggest mistake I see from Drunker Queen players at a lower rank is the wasting of their shout. Shout is your only engagement tool on Drunker Queen, so when you use it, it needs to be for actually initiating a fight, not just for peel or mindlessly throwing it out. Its long cooldown means that each single shout has to matter, so be sure that you're using it at opportune times. For Drunk Rat, I see a lot of them forget to use a wall to make their tire quieter. When your tire is just going out at normal speed and volume, it's much easier for the enemy team to pinpoint where it's coming from and how close it is. Use a wall to slow it down and quiet it so that your enemy has a tough time marking it and killing it before you get value with it. As for Kiriko, I see a lot of them struggle with the balancing of heals and damage. Damage is great on Kiriko, but don't forget that your primary function is to keep your team alive. Generally, you want to focus an enemy who is out of position by themselves and is susceptible to a couple quick headshots rather than consistently spamming down a choke like a zen would. Think of your damage as being better for pressuring and getting quick picks rather than steady spam damage. Now I don't really know how this started but lots of Lucios tend to use their ult from super high in the air on a wall or just in general. It delays the time it takes for your ult to land for your team and can paint a target on your back or cause your team to die before the sound barrier reaches them. And you know that you're going to need to use your sound barrier, use it from the ground and if you can, 
go up onto a prop with its small little jump to make it land quickly and get out to your team as soon as possible. A massive mistake at lower ranks involves Mei not being able to keep track of cooldowns before she uses her ult. Blizzard is powerful but sensitive. A matrix can totally remove it or Zarya's bubbles or a transcendence and the best way to deal with these cooldowns is generally going to be your wall. Ice wall can be used as a cover to stop defense matrix from eating her ultimate or it can be used to split enemies up from Zanyata's trance or even used to block LOS from the enemy Zarya and force her to break through it before she can give out a bubble. If you have a good eye for it, you can just wait some of these cooldowns out entirely before using your ult. Mercy mains definitely overestimate the safety of res. You need to constantly be aware of enemy positions and generally the safest times to res are either when your team is pushing and causing a distraction for you or immediately after your teammate dies. The former presents a distraction for the enemy to deal with before stopping your res and the latter reduces the amount of time they have to react to the kill and attempt to stop your res. I see a lot of Moiras forget to combine their orbs with their ultimate. When you use coal, you're going to be stuck in the ultimate animation and unable to use your abilities anyway, so you might as well throw out a damage orb if you're going for kills or a healing orb if your team is critical in order to maximize your value. By the time you come out of ult, you'll pretty much have your orb back anyway, so there's not really a reason to not throw them out there. Most Orisa players don't think about combinations for their ultimates and end up rarely getting kills because of it. The best thing to do with a result is to combo it with some kind of extra damage, even just an anti-grenade. This will soften up the enemy players and allow you to land a one shot from around 100 to 120% charge instead of the needed 160 for 200 HP targets. For Farah, I see a lot of Farah players get scared of fighting hit scans. The only way you're going to be able to stop them from shutting you down is by getting used to spamming them at range and landing good prediction rockets or using your conk to get yourself up in their face where it's hard to hit you. You can't allow yourself to get stuck in limbo of always waiting for your team to open up a zone for you, so get used to fighting at the ranges where the enemy hit scan is weak. By far the most common bad mistake for reapers is how telegraphed reaper players make their ult. The enemy team will know what you're up to when you walk straight into the middle of them looking at nobody. Instead, look to set up on a flank for when they walk past you or teleport or at least get a speed boost around a corner so your ult is harder for the enemy team to read. As for Ryan, I see a lot of Reinhardts looking to use pins non-stop and not understanding the best directions to pin. You want to pin when an enemy is already close to a wall that's near you so that your pin is short or when you can pin an enemy into your own backline. It's pretty rare for you to ever actually need to go for a deep pin into the enemy backline or even in their direction as this will end up getting you killed more than it ends up helping you. Try to pin backwards or quickly to the side. A common Roadhog mistake that I rarely see people talk about is the use of Hog Ult for primarily offensive purposes rather than defensive. Now don't get me wrong, Hog's ultimate can secure kills in the right moments for sure, but you need to really use Hog's ult for saving your team from things like a nano tank or for stopping a blade in its tracks due to your ability to boop. It's less pretty, but it's a much more consistent way of getting insane value from Hog's ultimate. The biggest Sigma mistake I see is when they drop their shield to use their kinetic grasp without paying close attention to where their team is. It's best to communicate when you are dropping your shield so that your team knows to back off and not rely on it to survive, rather than you dropping it to use your grasp and suddenly your teammate gets hit by a ton a spam or a zen volley or a headshot etc for sojourn this may seem like a cheap answer but in reality it's just straight up the most important thing for her i see people get very impatient with their railgun wanting to use it pretty much as soon as they have it and going for the first target they see patience is a virtue with railgun wait until someone is jumping or a scoped in ana or just in general an easy shot before you throw out your rail and have to spend a ton of time charging another one for soldier easy mistake easy way to fix it i see lots of soldier 76 players forgetting to use their heal pad before they use tack visor. This will usually result in them either being weak during their visor and easy to push and kill or force them to use up a valuable second to place down their heal pad. If you start your heal pad right before you press your ult button, you'll double up on the animations and save yourself time, allowing you to continue visoring without the need to stop and put your heal pad down. I see a lot of somber players wait for the perfect opportunity to decloak and get a pick far too often. Just hacking and spamming a tank is fine because ultimately your best way to steadily win fights is not with a pick. EMP charges very quickly, needing only a little over 1000 damage to usually get it fully charged and ready to go. With this in mind, don't be afraid of not always going for a backline pick and sometimes opting to just engage with your team and look to deal as much damage as possible slash hack the enemy tank for some value. This doesn't mean you should never go for backline picks, but having a healthy balance will make it more difficult to predict what you're doing as opposed to just always decloaking on the backline and having them constantly look for you. Moving on to Sim, I see a lot of Symmetras go for TP bombs where you put turrets down and then teleport into the enemy backline without setting themselves up properly 
properly first. You should either have your beam fully charged up from the enemy tank or use a right click before you TP. That way it travels to an enemy while you're charging a second right click for a very sudden and powerful set of burst damage. For Torb, the biggest mistake is using your ult without overloading first. A lot of Torbs will pop their Molten Core and then run slightly into the fray to get an angle for their lava while being pretty easy to hit and kill. If you use your overload ability first, you'll get some much appreciated extra health and movement speed to make it easier to get your ult off without any issue. Now for Tracer, this one does not have a super easy fix for it, but easily the biggest mistake that Tracers make is not taking time to practice your blink distancing. There are lots of workshop codes, or you can even just practice on your own in the training range or in deathmatch lobbies, but make sure you're trying to actively get better at judging exactly how far your blinks will go. That way you can go through enemies and seamlessly weave blinks into your combat as needed without getting stuck on walls or making mistakes that can prove to be lethal. For Widow, please stop using your wall hacks as soon as you get them. Even top 500 Widow mains will use their walls when the fight has already been won and waste a good opportunity to set up an easy few shots to win the following fight. Make sure when you use your wall hacks you are using them to set a team fight up or to at least set yourself up to carry in the fights when it matters. As for Winston, lots of new monkey players go way higher into the air than they need to. Remember that you don't gain any extra damage for falling a far distance onto an enemy, so you generally want to make your jumps as low and precise as possible to prevent them from being able to react and move out of your trajectory before you land on your target. Also combine a melee or right click or both as you land in order to maximize your burst damage. Easily the most simple mistake I see Wrecking Balls make is always using their Grapple Claw to swing up and then slam instead of using ledges and props to their advantage. You don't need that much height in order to get a slam off, and using a prop or ledge to do so will make it more difficult for the opponent to predict and leave you with a cooldown to get out with afterwards. For Zarya, there really isn't a ton of mistakes to make since she is really straightforward, but the worst is always using personal bubble and never thinking about teammates who are setting up for plays. Don't be so greedy with your bubbles. If your Genji is going to use Dragon Blade next fight, save one and keep an eye out for him to go in so that you can make his job much easier. For Zen, when you use your ultimate, you can no longer use your orb abilities, so a lot of Zenyatas don't even think to put their orbs out on an opponent before they use their ult in order to have them actively doing something while he cannot switch them. At the least, you should always discord an enemy so that during the fight your team has damage boost while they are working inside of your trance. And that is all for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out the Game Leap website in the description below. I will see you all again sometime. Take care and peace.